Welcome to Inspired Living with Mark and Kim. Every Wednesday, Mark and Kim, along with their special guests, will explore thought-provoking topics and ideas that promote creativity, self-help, healing, happiness, and well-being to inspire you on your spiritual journey. Each week, Mark and Kim will discuss different paths to achieving a more spiritual, balanced, happy, and healthy lifestyle. Topics will elevate consciousness and range from metaphysics to the human and social experience and all things spiritual. Welcome to an inspired community that offers support, encouragement, and new ways of thinking. Mark and Kim are tested, certified, and professional spiritual mediums, metaphysical teachers, healers, and spiritual advisors with their own individual spiritual practices in Seattle, Washington, and Los Angeles, California. You are the inspired and the inspiration. You are the inspired and the inspiration. Hello, inspired listeners. Welcome to another Wisdom Wednesday and another awesome episode of Inspired Living Radio with Mark and Kim here on the Ohm Times Radio Network. I am your host, Mark Lane Hart. I am broadcasting live from my studio here in Seattle, Washington. If you want to work with me and do a little spiritual prospecting for your own spiritual goal, visit MarkLaneHart.com or internet search The Intuitive Prospector. My co-host today, Kim, is out. She is uh, enjoying spring break. Uh, tis the season uh, for this the spring break. So she is with her family enjoying some time off. She'll be back next uh, Wednesday as we uh, bring forth another awesome show. That's what we try to do every Wisdom Wednesday is bring guests and, and topics that really inspire you, get you thinking outside the box, maybe get moving again. Today's going to be no difference as we're going to be discussing some spiritual adrenaline and a lifestyle plan to nourish and strengthen your recovery. So for any of our listeners out there, any of our inspired listeners out there all around the globe, if you are on a path of recovery, this is going to be the show for you. If you want to interact with us right now, you can call into our live call in line. That's going to be, we're going to be taking questions in regards to the topic only uh, at the second half of the show. The number to call in is 1 202 570 7057. If you don't want to come on the air with us live, that's okay. Just shoot us a, a quick post on our closed page, which is Inspired Living Radio. That's our closed Facebook page. Uh, we have a growing community of about, uh, let me see here. Uh, last look, we have almost a thousand inspired listeners all around the world. And if you do join our closed community page, make sure to click on our uh, interactive global map and put a little pin so we can see where all of our listeners are listening, whether you're listening from the UK, here in the United States, or somewhere down under. We appreciate all of our inspired listeners. If you do, uh, if you can't make the live show today, which is every Wisdom Wednesday at 12 p.m. Uh, Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern, all of the shows do go over to podcast and they are archived on the Ohm Times Radio archives page. You can also catch the podcast, Four Seasons of Inspired Living Radio Now, over on iTunes, YouTube, Podbean, and SoundCloud. If you want to work with Kim since she's not here, she can be found at lovefirst.info. She has a bi-coastal practice both in Richmond, Virginia, and in Sino, California. She does amazing work from uh, psychic, mediumship, uh, also hypnotherapy, which I find very fascinating for the mind. So make sure to check out Kim either on her lovefirst.info page. You can also catch her uh, on Fridays for uh, Aloha Freedom Fridays. And you can also catch me every Monday morning at 8 a.m. Pacific Standard Time for Metaphysical Mocha Mondays, where I have a, a live show and I interact with all of my uh, in, uh, all of my spiritual prospectors. So it's a lot of fun. We've got you covered all week. Metaphysical Mocha Mondays, with me on Facebook Live, Inspired Living Radio, every Wednesday here on Home Times Radio, and every Friday, Aloha Freedom Friday with Kim. So you're you're inspired throughout the week. I like to say, be inspired, inspire others, inspire before we expire. So our positive uh, affirmation for this month, every, every show we like to start off with a positive affirmation. And the positive affirmation for this month is, I have a winner's mindset and I love accomplishing my goals. Let me just say that one more time. I have a winner's mindset, and I love accomplishing my goals. That's your Inspired Living Radio positive affirmation for this month. We'll be talking about it all throughout the month before every show about having that winner's mindset and accomplishing your goals. And what better time to do that than in the spring? And that's where we're at. So again, if you want to interact with us, you can go to Facebook and post a question live right now. You can also follow, follow us now on Twitter. 
and Instagram under the handles Inspired for us. And you can also catch Kim and I on our single YouTube libraries where we have all four seasons of Inspired Living Radio, uh, amazing soul adventure videos, hiking, diving, uh, meditation. So make sure to follow us on YouTube as well. So with that, I want to jump in because we're going to be talking about spiritual adrenaline today. This is gonna. This is a book that was written by Tom Shanahan. And Tom has been so kind to join us today live on the air. And we're going to be going through the book, going to be asking him some questions. So for those that are on a path of recovery, whether it's a, a recovery from addiction, whether it's a recovery from uh, maybe a mindset or a change of career, or maybe even just you've lost a loved one, and that can be recovery, the grieving process and going through that recovery. We're going to be giving some tips and some ways to help you identify and to move forward. And Tom has been doing this for some time now. He's a personal trainer. He's a weight management and sports nutrition consultant, and he is a certified health coach. And I know Tom and I are going to hit it off real quick because my background is also in sports medicine and human performance. And for the last two decades, that's how long Tom's been doing this, he has served in the government as well as in the private sector, an attorney where he's had numerous uh, precedent setting cases in the areas of LGBT rights, child custody, and public policy. His first book, Spiritual Adrenaline, which is a lifestyle a lifestyle plan to nourish and strengthen your recovery, came out this January of 2019. If you want to learn more about uh, this book and get a hold of this book, like I, what I have right here in front of me, uh, you can get it at all the major outlets. And you can also go to Spirit spiritualadrenaline.com and we'll have Tom uh, bring that up again here in the second half of the show and you can also follow Tom on Facebook under facebook.com forward slash spiritual adrenaline so with that I'd like to welcome Tom Shanahan to Inspired Living Radio welcome my friend Mark thank you so much for having me I'm very excited to be here well we're excited to have you and every week we try to bring on guests who can inspire, get us thinking outside the box, maybe get us thinking differently, get us moving forward. And there are a lot of people out there that have different types of uh, recoveries. And uh, even Chris and I were talking right before we went live on the air that we all have different ways of re re going through recovery. But today we're going to be focusing on the spiritual adrenaline aspect of it. And let's just start with uh, introducing yourself to the uh, Inspired Listening audience all around the globe and sharing your story because that wasn't easy. That's what we were talking about before we came on the air was we are, we are all storytellers, but it's not always easy to share that personal story. Right, right, right. Well, it's a pleasure to come on and to share mine. And hopefully, you know, from my mistakes in the past, you know, I think I've learned a lot and people will benefit from hearing uh, about the lifestyle that I've created called spiritual adrenaline. You know, I grew up in a, a wonderful family. However, on both sides of my family, there is a genetic predisposition to abuse substances like alcohol and drugs. And growing up, I was around a lot of drinking, both in my family and in the neighborhood where I grew up. And so I developed the kind of habit of, you know, drinking for fun, and then it turned kind of morphed into drinking to cope, you know, with pressures and other issues mm -hmm. in college. And so, you know, fast forward to the future, I became a lawyer. You know, we um, you know, practice civil rights law, and I've done some really important precedent-setting cases. And I always enjoyed practicing, but but on that, on the on the side. I always drank a lot, and I worked in government, and the folks in politics and government also kind of – it was a lifestyle of going out a lot, drinking a lot, and so I developed a lot of bad habits. And when in 2010, a whole host of things happened um, all back-to-back. -back. In 2009, I'll tell you, I was in a very high-profile government job, and I was fired uh, – for alleged malfeasance. It was more of a, what I call a whistleblower situation, but I went returned mm -hmm. to private practice, uh, left my government post, and then that next, that was in, in 2009, and then in 2010, my office mate, who I still share office space with, an attorney here in New York, her son was paralyzed from the neck down in a snowboarding accident, and she left immediately to care for him and take a year off, and I promised to keep her, her practice going and cover her work, so it wouldn't be so obvious she wasn't here. So I took on her work, and I was, you know, I had a very heavy load myself. And then two months later, my cousin, who was uh, raised by my mom and dad, who's more like a brother, he was also paralyzed from the neck down. 
in a ski accident that was on March 10th, March 6th of 2010. And so suddenly, uh, his kids were young at the time. I became responsible for his, uh, his health care proxy and all kinds of responsibilities relating to the, the, this unexpected need that he had to have someone involved in his, every, all of his affairs on a day-to-day -day basis. And so that, I took on that responsibility because no one else in my family rose to the occasion. And then two months later, my mom was diagnosed with throat cancer. And mm -hmm. uh, my sister had three young kids at the time, and so I wanted to be very actively involved in her going to chemo and radiation. And I remember looking up at the sky going, God, what else can, what else can happen? <laughs> like, what, <laughs> what, what else can happen? Oh, boy, do I know that feeling. It, it was just like one thing after another, and then the reality was my mom's in Albany, New York. My brother lived and still lives in Portland, Maine. My law practice is in New York, and so I was constantly traveling back and forth, and I started to use cocaine to be able to keep up with all the demands at my office as well as the demands being placed on me on the personal level. And so it worked really well for a while, right? And that's what people say, and it's so true, but eventually it stopped working. And when mm -hmm. it stopped working, it was disastrous, you know. And so uh, in May 2011, I went into um, inpatient treatment. And, uh, you know, after that, I stayed for the 28 days, and I came out. And I just, you know, when I was in rehab, I had really – because I tried to get sober or stop drinking years before, and I just realized that it was a bad habit and it wasn't something that was really a positive aspect of my life. But when I wound up in rehab – I made this decision that I was sincerely going to embrace step work, and I was going to try, instead of trying to fit in with the cool people at rehab, I was going to try and fit out and work steps and do all the things I was told to be, to do and kind of be the recovery geek because I didn't want <laughs> to fail at this. And, you know, mm -hmm. I, I, had a, I had a very positive experience at Conifer Park, which is in upstate New York. Um, and then when I came out, I, I just embraced this new lifestyle. Uh, what happened, though, was interesting. I went into Conifer Park at 140 pounds. I was so sick when I was admitted I, because I was putting cocaine on my gums, so they were bleeding um, from constantly having cocaine put on them. And then when I was trying to get to Conifer, I wound up in a, in a cardiac unit at a hospital, and Conifer almost didn't take me because I had, you know, uh, potential problems, cardiac issues. And so I wound up in the hospital. I was medically cleared, and then I was able to go to Conifer. But the mm -hmm. physical consequences of my using were really evident, and I weighed 140 pounds, and I came out at 177. So put a lot of weight on in rehab. And what I started to notice was I felt really good. But um, mentally, I was really feeling much better. But like when they would put a basket of bread on the table, I would eat the entire basket, and then oh, yeah. I would look for more, and I would uh, eat as many French fries as I could. I would eat as many cookies and chocolate, and ice cream, sweets. whatever. I could. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And I started to live that way when I got out of rehab. And you know, at a certain point, I realized, you know, I feel mentally very much. Like I'm on the right track, you know, on the mental health track. Things are moving in the right direction. I feel much more positive. I worked the steps. I did the inventories I was told to do. But I noticed that my physical health, I didn't feel was coming along in the same way as my mental health. And I would go to meetings, and I was still smoking. I smoked before I went in. When I came out, I was still smoking, and I started, I started to smoke more after um, you know, going into recovery than I had before going into rehab, two packs a day. And so outside meetings, I would smoke. I would take breaks during 12-step meetings to go have a cigarette, drink a lot. Of, I drank coffee all day with you know, you know, sugar in it and cream. Mm -hmm. And I also would go to fellowship and um, you know, it, I would eat late at late night pizza, burgers, and those kinds of things. And I just really didn't feel that my physical health was rec recovering in the same way as my mental health. And I started to really think that um, I was undercutting my efforts to stay sober by some of the behaviors that I adopted in early recovery and that I, I saw around kind of meetings and other recovery environment. So um, I wound up saying I'm going to go to the gym early in the morning. So I started going to the gym early in the morning. I met a guy named Mike Foley who was a sports nutritionist up in the World Gym in Portland, Maine. He started to explain to me, you know, how important what I was eating, what I was eating was, not only to my ability to accomplish my health goals, but also to stay sober. 
Uh, he started to make me think about, you know, the linkage, why I was grabbing for carbohydrates so much and why I was using co- drinking so much coffee, carbs, you know, basically for the energy and kind of replicating in my brain the release of dopamine and endorphins, you know, when I was eating it in the way that alcohol did when I was drinking. And so he got me started on that path. And then uh, I met somebody else at the gym up there named Dr. Michael Bedix who told me to come in to his office, you know, and he wanted to uh, check out my blood work. And he, and he suggested to me that it was important to take a look at the, uh, your blood, my blood work. He said blood doesn't lie to see inside of my body how my uh, my addictive – my, my active, years of active addiction had impacted my physical body in ways that I couldn't necessarily see. And he's a DO. And when I got my blood work back, when I went over it with him, I was very skeptical. I'm like, this guy just wants money. This is, this is not going to, you know, it's, it's <laughs> ridiculous. But I said, you know what? I'm supposed to have an open mind and be willing, right? So I went, yeah. we drew the blood. But, you know, when the results came back, they scared me because I had a five times increased rate of heart disease than the average person. My triglyceride levels were through the roof. My bad cholesterol levels were high. My Mm -hmm. cortisol levels were incredibly high. My white blood cell count was very high, and he attributed that to how much I was smoking and and Mm -hmm. the inflammation from the smoking as well as eating really kind of junk carbs um, a lot as part of a normal course of a day diet for me. And um, you know, just the markers in my blood uh, were told me a story that made me feel very uncomfortable and it made me feel that I really needed to address not only my physical, I was concerned initially about losing weight and like looking better, feeling better, but now I had to address the internal damage that I, I had done to my body and, mm-hmm. and you know, kind of make conscious contact with my body in the way that I had made conscious contact with my mind by working the 12 steps. And so I started to integrate. That's when I went and got certified as a uh, personal trainer and as a sports nutritionist. I went to the um, Institute for Integrative Nutrition because I wanted to learn all kinds of different dietary theories. And as I started to learn these um, these new, uh, like about, about diet and nutrition and also exercise science, I started to apply the 12 steps to on what I was eating and how much I was exercising. And I found that there's such that it's a powerful combination, and it's a lifestyle that is not that I created a lifestyle that I call it spiritual adrenaline, which is consistent with a 12-step practice and enhances the 12 steps by integrating a physical health into the traditional 12-step practice. And so that's what spiritual awesome. adrenaline. So I think Tom, right there, about. let's let's hold that let's hold that thought because we're going to go to our very first break. We'll come back and we're going to dive into the uh, the depths of spiritual adrenaline, a lifestyle a lifestyle plan to nourish and strengthen your recovery with Tom Shanahan. Uh, you are listening to Inspired Living Radio. We will be back here in two minutes. You are the inspired and the inspiration. The future of Internet radio is here. Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. Host your show on IOM FM, the radio network of Ohm Times Media, one of the more recognized brand names in the conscious community, and is backed by the extensive marketing reach of Ohm Times. Hosting a show on IOM FM immediately connects you with our extensive, dedicated community. Are you seeking answers to life questions? Would you like to connect to a departed loved one? Are you suffering from pain, stress, or anxiety? Kimberly Thalkin is a tested, certified, and professional psychic, spiritual medium, energy healer, hypnotherapist, and the founder of Love First, where life transformations happen. Love First services support, guide, and empower individuals by connecting them to their highest potential to live a healthier, joyful, and meaningful life that's filled with purpose. All services can be done by phone, Skype, or in person in Encino, California. Please visit lovefirst.info. That's L-O-V-E-F-I-R-S-T dot info for more information. Fox, host and astrologer of The Astrology Show. Each week, I'll give you access to the current transits, which are a valuable tool 
that provide astrological information to help unlock the potential each of us has. Understanding the stars can help steer us in the right direction to make better informed choices. So if you're wondering what's going to happen in your week ahead, be sure to tune in to The Astrology Show for guidance, Mondays at 9pm Eastern Time. Death Row Dogs Rescue is a 100% all-volunteer, no-kill rescue 501c3 nonprofit organization. We are run solely by volunteers who dedicate their time and resources for the past 30 years to rescuing homeless pets from the streets in Los Angeles and surrounding areas and from city and county animal shelters who are on death row often moments away from being euthanized. We provide housing, medical care, and training to these neglected, abused, and often severely injured animals. Donate now, save a life, and allow these beautiful dogs to experience a home life filled with love. All donations are greatly appreciated and are tax deductible. Please visit www.deathrowdogsrescue.com to see some of our amazing dogs who need homes. Do not breed or buy. Make adoption your first option. Welcome back to Inspire Living Radio with Mark and Kim, your host, Mark Lane Hart, the intuitive prospector, with our very special guest today, Tom Shanahan, talking about his book, Spiritual Adrenaline. If you missed the live show, make sure to catch us over on iTunes, SoundCloud, Podbean, or YouTube, and make sure to subscribe to my Soul Adventures playlist on YouTube while you're there. Lots of spiritual awesomeness. And you can also catch me now through Alexa. Just ask Alexa or your Echo Pod to open up Positive Living, where you can get spiritual tips every single day so tom welcome back to inspire living radio we were stopped right there at the commercial break for the 12-step process i really want to jump deep now into spiritual adrenaline and the recovery and thank you so much for sharing your personal story with our inspired listeners i think it's important to uh share that what i like to say the shakening that causes the awakening and i find it interesting in 2010 that you had this uh, the shift, if you will, in 2010 is known as a universal year. And a little tip for you uh, in numerology and for all you numerologists out there, 2019 is also a universal year. So get ready for big shifts and big changes. Oh <laughs> <laughs> but I think I think you know in 2010 you were you were trying to find your way. You found your way, and I think you're gonna you know do it in a different sense universally, where you're actually now helping other people, guiding other people, teaching other people. And so it's a different shift, but it's that that constant that uh, original awakening from the shaking that gets us on that path of where we need to go, including your diet, uh, getting your blood work checked. And I always remind people to not just your blood work, but your mouth, the internals of your mouth. My dentist tells me all of this all the time. It's important to keep a, a very healthy mouth and what you put in, you know, tobacco or any kind of cartridges and keep brushing your teeth because they can really measure your health based just on the, uh, on how your mouth is as far as getting your uh, teeth clean. So, um, welcome back. Let's uh, talk about the light bulb moment because I think that's important. I know you said you started to do the um, May of 2011 where you found your sponsor and you started the 12-step program, but you also had that light bulb moment where you realized you uh, you couldn't stay in recovery forever and you had to get pushed out of the nest, as they say, and, and, and spread those wings. Well, yeah, and I just think there were issues that I was learning about outside of a, a more traditional recovery uh, community that were really in, impactful to my recovery. You know, some people do say uh, that outside issues, they're called, in 12-step in language, but is nutrition and exercise can be considered outside issues. Not everyone feels that way, but some do. And so I started to realize that by integrating those issues into my overall recovery, I was really, really, you know, being able to accomplish things that I just had, didn't think were possible. And so I wanted to understand why. I spent a lot of time, not only um, when I was writing the book, it took five years to write the book because it's an evidence-based book with citation to the, all the peer-reviewed studies uh, that I rely on for my conclusions. And I went... I did a lot of research on, for example, I wanted to understand why I grab for carbohydrates, What's, what, 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 what drives me to do that. And I started to really understand how uh, carbs break down in the same way oftentimes as alcohols do. And so, um, you know, and, and also I started to understand how many of the carbs that I was going to uh, were chemically similar. But uh, uh, let me put it this way. There, many of the carbs that I went to are what are known as the sister foods to alcohol. They're refined mm -hmm. sugar. 
yeah. soda, white bread, rice, pasta, potatoes, and French fries. You know, and when I started to understand that there was some linkage going on and actually some substitution, well, I then took it to the next level and I said, let me, I want to do some research on healthy ways to get energy that won't undercut but rather enhance my recovery. And I started to, for example, un, uh, research like uh, co- complex carbs, what complex carbs I could integrate into my diet. And over the last, uh, I'll have eight years sober on May 11th uh, of this year, uh, that's without alcohol or cocaine. And then also I'll have six years in September um, without smoking cigarettes. And oh, so I started to really... Thank you. Thank you. I mean, I never thought I'd be able to quit smoking. I'll tell you that much. It was the hardest addiction (laughs) to get over. And I know a lot of people are struggling. I always tell them, don't give up. Don't give up because you can do it, but you just have to keep looking for what works for you. And so in the book, I have the whole front section of the book with all all my research explaining to people – why people, uh, who, especially in addiction recovery, grab for certain foods or you know, try and uh, or have a tendency to eat these foods. And I give them the underlying reasons scientifically. I also uh, explain how exercise can impact you know, mood and overall how people are feeling. And I go through the studies that show even like five minutes of exercise, of brisk walking a day done consistently can dramatically increase a um, person's uh, positive attitude and self-perception. Uh, and so it's because depression is oftentimes something that comes uh, along with uh, the recovery, uh, people in, in addiction recovery, I address a lot of studies on, on depression in the context of uh, exercise, but also in the context of the foods that people are eating and recommendations on foods to stay away from that may, because their organs have, you know, are, are they have some organ related disease or damage from years mm-hmm. of active addiction to eat things that will put less stress on their organs as their body begins the process of healing. And so the whole front section of the book addresses the research and the studies uh, specific to re- addiction recovery. And then that's like the educational section of the book. And then the back section actually gives people tools, both exercise, nutrition, and spiritual, that they can integrate into their lifestyle. Uh, to, to change things slowly over time so that they can feel better, look better, and, you know, get, if they were to have their blood tested again uh, six months out, have come back with better results. So and that's, that's what I like about part. the book. And that's what I like about the book, Tom, too, is because you, 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 you open the book with your personal story. And I'm going to read just a little section of the, the book, if I, if I may, so the listeners can – uh, relate sure. to your own personal story, but then you also brought brought in the science aspect of it. You brought in you know the nutritional about the zero calories with alcohol. There's a lot of things I learned that I didn't know, and like I said, I have a you know my graduate studies are in sports medicine, so it was really helpful. But at the end of the book too, like you said, you bring some real down to earth applications that all of us are looking for. And what I, what I liked about the advice that you give to all your newcomers is to challenge yourself with a diet, nutrition, and exercise plan that will make that will make you get out of your comfort zone and grow, right? We're all in our comfort right. zones and we all are creatures of habit. Uh, but when you're uncomfortable, then you're growing. When you're suffering, you're growing. You didn't mind the suffering while you, while you were using so plug into a positive connection. And here's the part I really like, because I say this to my students all the time in my uh, spiritual development group. Get comfortable being uncomfortable. uncomfortable. It's, it's, about the, it's all about the process, not the result. Get comfortable being uncomfortable. It's the process, not the result. And you learn most of the way up to the mountain, not when you get to the top. And how true is that? We all want to get to the top, but we forget about that learning moment all the way up. Uh, and I like to say, you know, the lesson repeats until it completes. And so getting to those mountains can be, those mountaintops can be very, very challenging. But you keep going. Mm-hmm. You stay the course. Yeah, I think absolutely. And with the people that are hopefully are reading my book and, and thinking about the concepts, I try and be gentle because the reality is, for me, I smoked for 24 years, okay? Mm-hmm. And I drank probably 26 and cocaine maybe 20 or so, right? That's a long time to engage in certain habits and behaviors, right? So that became my comfort zone. And what I'm trying to get people to really think about small changes because once they come into recovery, that's an entirely new comfort zone for them, right? So in that first year or so, I mean, I admire anybody 
who you can say, I'm going to address this issue, I'm going to identify someone who has a problem, I'm going to go to a meeting, and I'm going to try a whole different, new different way of living. It's, it's huge to come into, uh, to step out of the active addiction com- comfort zone and come into the recovery. And so I, what I tell people about my book and the spiritual adrenaline is it's for people who have a, six months, a year or more, and they're comfortable having established that that foundation. Once they have that foundation, and if they feel like like I felt, they're hitting a wall, they're kind of stuck, right? And they're being mm-hmm. held back not by other people or the the substance that was holding them back for years, but kind of by their own lifestyle choices and behaviors in recovery, then then my book is for them because then they can learn how to make these small changes. And for me, you know, uh, when I started doing cardio at the gym, you know, doing six minutes was a a huge hurdle to me. I was like, really? Six minutes? Ten minutes? And I would actually take cigarette breaks during my workouts. And go outside the gym to smoke. And when I think, when I think back on that now, I'm sorry, I don't mean to laugh, it, but it's like you think I, about it, that visual, true. right? Oh, yeah, right, right, right. I mean, it's just insane. Like, and also, so you know, now I just competed this past weekend in, in a in a men's physique competition. You know, where I, I do tremendous amount of cardio and lots of you know two hours a day of training just before the show. The point is, but I started with six minutes on an exercise bike or, or at the gym, and where I am now eight years later, it's it's these small little changes that we you know we accomplish and we take pride in that we build on over time. It's not going to happen over. And the funny thing, too, Mark, right. is, you know, now I'm a sports nutritionist. <laughs> I wrote the book, and, you know, I, I, my, my, I'm, I'm, like, obsessed with nutrition. But when I first got out of rehab, I, and I tell this story because I just want everyone out there to know, I understand where they're at if they're new to this, right? I seriously would go to Dunkin' Donuts and get a colada, like a strawberry colada or a pineapple colada, and think I was doing a good thing because it was fruit. You know, it was fruit juice, right? Fruit flavored. And and, and that's... (laughs) That's exactly. It was all sugar, right? But to me, it was fruit flavored, so it was a healthy thing. And so, if I could, can see the results that I've seen, I, you, you know, anyone out there listening, if you don't believe that you can do it, you can do it. And you know, the reality is, I've continued to test my blood every six months with Dr. Beatus. And so now, we, we first did it in January 2012. I have years and years of the blood tests uh, with him. Uh, that show not only the external, uh, exterior changes, people oftentimes will tell me I look so healthy, I'm 51 years old, I don't look my age, but like my blood work now, uh, Dr. Bedix uh, describes it as the equivalent of a 22 to 25 year old Ethiopian marathon runner. Oh, wow. My blood work is incredibly incredibly good for someone my age and so when i get those blood i actually get excited to get my blood results back and compare it to where i was uh four or five years ago and i and the other reality is and this is god's honest truth in the last eight years the only time i've been sick because i really adopted this healthy lifestyle the, the lifestyle that's in the book is when i quit smoking Finally, for the for the last time, and I was able to actually break the habit. I got a very bad cold um, for a couple of days, but aside from that, um, I haven't really been sick from the age 44 to now to 50 to 51. And when I was in my like 30s and early 40s, every day I would take um, decongestants, I would take Advil, I would put Visine in my eyes. I was always exhausted. I was oftentimes sick, and it was all lifestyle related, you know? I mean, and so when I think back on this, like, this profound change, not only in my, my physical health, but my mental health, and how I feel like, I feel like really connected to other people and to the universe. And I mean, I felt so outside when I was in active addiction and even in early recovery. And so it's just amazing uh, the the how little changes, baby steps with nutrition and exercise over time can really uh, add up to profound change in the long term if you, if you just commit to it and take it step by step. Yeah, I always say the journey of the thousand miles begins with that single step. And a lot of times it's awareness, right? It's awareness to what you want to change because it's different for everybody. And you're right, for, the, for our listeners out there, if you're struggling and you, and you feel like you can't do it, uh, you, you can. I always remind people to believe it. The belief starts within to, and then to see it and then to achieve it. 
And I, I bet you're no longer getting off the treadmill and, and going outside to smoke a cigarette. And I know you uh, <laughs> did really well at this weekend competition. I think you said, uh, if you want to tell our listeners, didn't you didn't you win something? Didn't you play? Yeah, something? I was actually up in Pittsburgh over the weekend, and I competed in the. It's called the National Physique Committee (NPC) in their Eastern Regional Championships. It's a it's a drug tested. It's called a natural bodybuilding competition, and I competed in men's physique, and I won in men 35 and over, and then 40 and over, and the 50 and over categories, and then I came in second overall in my height, my height, my height group, and it's been. A, I decided to give this a shot. Guys at the gym were saying, why don't you, this is back, uh, 2014 was my first competition. And it's kind of become a part, a big part of my life because what's so interesting is the people at those competitions work so hard and they look good. I mean, obviously they look good when they get there. But so many people have a story. One of the, one of the, I, have, I tell people about my drug addiction, my alcohol addiction, and one of the guys I competed against was telling me he was, this was, his, this was to celebrate losing 200 pounds that he had put off. He had just come back from skin Good surgery a couple of months before. I, I know. And then another guy was telling me, you know, 40 pounds, uh, a gentleman who was not at this competition, but the competition I did last year was in a divorce and he became, um, he drank, began drinking and doing drugs after the divorce, wound up in, in rehab and he got back into a healthy lifestyle and he competed because he, he just, it helped him really focus. And, and so what I'm trying to say is, you know, I, I feel really proud when I, it may sound crazy, but to share my journey with people because, you know, they open up about their journey exactly. too. And, you know, we talk about there's all different kinds of recovery in this world, in this day and age, all the pressure we're under, the way I honestly feel, Mark, is everybody's in recovery from something. That's what I yeah, that totally agree with you. Age. You yeah. know, that's what I really believe. And so, you know, I also find that, you know, when I would try and uh, hide, not really hide, but try and keep quiet the issues that challenged me, I thought everybody else was perfect and everybody else had it down, right? And I was the only one who maybe was lost or didn't get it, right? I was a misfit. But what's what's wonderful is when I'm honest with people about my own failings and, and shortcomings as a human being, you know, they open up about theirs. And so, you know, we have a whole community now on Facebook. I have the Spiritual Adrenaline Facebook page is 75,000, you know, people. I saw that. Um, Love it. Yeah, people post all the time. It's a beautiful, it's a beautiful thing. Well, feel, like my I, grandma always used to say, yeah, and yeah. like my grandma always used to say, a closed mouth doesn't get fed. And I wouldn't say crazy, Tom. I'd say inspiring. And we're going to go to our last break here on Inspired Living Radio. We'll be back here in two minutes talking about spiritual adrenaline with our special guest today, Tom Shanahan. The cutting edge of conscious radio, OM Times Radio, IOM FM. Have you wondered how to change your love paradigm? The secret key is finding a love partnership, not just a regular connection. How do you find these? Through conscious relationships. Ascending Hearts Dating is a dating site for people like you that believes in second chances and a different type of spiritual connection. Try Ascending Hearts for free at ascendinghearts.com and change your love paradigm. Ascending Hearts, the premier dating community for the spiritually awake. One planet, 7.3 billion people, only one you. Life offers us many opportunities and learning experiences. Are you ready to explore and discover this beautiful planet, the life and energy all around us, the spiritual world, and what is unseen, along with your own personal soul adventure? Mark Lanehart, the intuitive prospector, is the spiritual connection you have been prospecting for. Internationally known as a tested and professional clairvoyant medium and spiritual advisor, Mark's work as a metaphysical teacher, medical instructor, radio show host, inspirational writer, and hiking guide are here to help you on a journey of self-discovery, healing, inspiration, education, and a whole lot of spiritual awesomeness. Dare to dream. Dare to explore. Dare to live. For more information on Mark's spiritual practice in Seattle, Washington, Please visit MarkLaneHart.com or internet search The Intuitive Prospector. 
Tune in to The Practical Intuitive, Mind, Body, Spirit for the Real World with me, host Robin Fritz, Mondays at 2 p.m. Pacific, 5 Eastern. I'll cover personal and business intuition, animal communication, mediumship, space clearing, past life regression, shamanic insights, energy healing, soul choice, and more, all to help you tap your own intuitive and healing skills. No ifs, ands, or buts. To protect his home and family from disaster, Steve used courage, wisdom, and his camera phone. That should do it. Way to go, Steve. By simply taking digital pictures of his family's important documents, Steve can always have them stored safely online, no matter when disaster strikes. Learn other simple ways to protect your home and family before a natural disaster at ready.gov. That's ready.gov. A message from FEMA and the Ad Council. Welcome back, Inspired listeners. This is Inspired Living Radio with Mark and Kim here on the Ohm Times Radio Network. Our very special guest today, Tom Shanahan, talking about his book, Spiritual Adrenaline, A Lifestyle Plan to Nourish and Strengthen Your Recovery. And during the break, Tom, I was just thinking about my own tagline, dare to dream, dare to explore, dare to live. Let's keep, let's continue to explore and let's get into some of the easy topics that people might be able to integrate uh today and take some gold nuggets away from today's show and also if you could share with the listeners any other uh, uh social media sites where they can get the book or any upcoming events that you have coming uh let's do that right now before we run out of time because these shows are so fun and they go by so very fast they do go by quickly yeah uh, uh so if anyone's interested in joining our community it's spiritual adrenaline on, on facebook we also have a closed active sober community group where people share about their they ask for advice so if anyone's interested as well, they can join into the active closed group because there's more more personal information on that page. And then I have um, in September of this year, I'm leading a hike in Banff National Park in the Canadian Rockies beautiful, that I beautiful. designed with our local guards uh, guides, and it's, we've incorporated 12-step meetings up on the glacier. It's going to be amazing. And then next April, April 2020, I'm leading a sober trip up to up the Inca Trail to Machu Picchu, and I'm really excited for that trip as well. So people can join us. They can go to the, our website, which is www.spiritualadrenaline.com, on the adventures page. And then also uh, every uh, every other week, uh, if you come to the, our Facebook page, I go through the chapters in the book one by one live on Facebook, and I take people's questions because I'm trying to support the readers in implementing the tools that are in the book. So I hope people will take advantage of those resources. Oh, what a great interaction, too, to actually read from the book. And for those of you that have never been up to Banff, Canada, Lake Louise, that is a beautiful area to do a hike right? and, <laughs> and to get into connection with your spiritual side, by all means. And, of course, Machu Picchu, heading down south, uh, great areas. But I find that nature is our greatest teacher, our greatest healer, our first home, our greatest engineer. So what better way to do that? And then, of course, ap- apply the... Uh, you know, the spiritual adrenaline that we're talking about today. So for those listeners out there that may be asking, how do I, where do I start, Tom? How do I, how do I dive into all of this? Okay. Well, I mean, the, the way I think, uh, the way we recommend people start is the way that I started with the blood test, right? And in the book, we have an entire chapter called Getting Started, where we lay out the metrics, both internal metrics, for example, the blood test, and then external metrics, like measuring body fat, weight, and those types of categories. And so it's important to, you know, take your day one picture and to know what your blood work is at the time you're starting so that you can have something to measure your progress against. And if you're not making the progress you want, obviously, Obviously, you can try and tweak and adjust the program in a way that works for you. And then we have exercise and nutrition tools. And one of the nutrition tools is, you know, we look at refined uh, some sugars in so many things, right? It's in things we think it's going to be in and things we don't think it's going to be in. It's being you know, put into so many products today, you know, including ketchup and, and just many of the things that people use on a daily basis. And so we have uh, a whole section on alternative sweeteners that people can use to try and replace the refined sugar or the unhealthy sugars in their diet with healthier versions. You know, we recommend honey, you know, stevia is one of the other examples. And these changes over time can lead to major, you know, results. 
and so we have a section on uh, alternative sweeteners. We have, I'm trying to think off the top of my head, an entire section on oh, how to satisfy your sweet tooth in recovery without giving up chocolate. You know, we, it's not, Mark, you know this, but the higher the cocoa content, the the the, re, the more it's real chocolate and not some right, kind right. of cheap, cheap filler. So we go through Process, that with people. Yeah. yeah, and then if you know, look, if you still want a little bit more of the sweetened taste, you could put some honey onto um, the onto the the higher cocoa level chocolate, and you'll get that satisfaction. I, have, I also have recipes in the book that people can use uh, to try and that with healthy alternative sweeteners in the baking process, so that they can still satisfy their sweet tooth but not get those empty calories. And then, like in the context of um, exercise, what I do is I try and teach people, uh, depending because there's all different kinds of goals that people have, and different types of exercise that they might be interested in, in doing. And what I try and do is let out, uh, encourage people to try and, I call it bookending, their exercise program with their quote-unquote more traditional recovery program. And what that means is this. If we know like 15 minutes of walking briskly in nature or a half hour of maybe uh, jogging has will like rev up the metabolism and prompt the production of healthy hormones uh, for X amount of time afterwards, depending on how, how long they, the people exercise. You know, to do that at a certain time of the day where they can have those benefits for the next one to two, maybe three or four hours, and then move their meeting, their 12-step meeting, or maybe the meeting with their sponsor, or maybe doing some service in the community to the latter part of the day. And the goal is to try and keep people in like a frame of gratitude throughout the day by benefiting. Let's say you're going to work out in the morning. In the late afternoon, you focus on trying to do something related to the more traditional recovery program so that you're staying in gratitude and prompting the production of healthy hormones all throughout the day. And then during that day, as the person goes about their business, we have recommendations on healthy snacks that they can incorporate into their, you know, their breakfast and then late morning snacks and early afternoon snacks, lunch, so that they're eating healthier energy sources throughout the day and avoiding the spikes in the blood sugar uh, that come with drinking or caffeine as well. It's the other, that's the other big culprit. You know, avoiding like taking in a lot of caffeine with a lot of sugar, noticing, you know, kind of spiking the blood sugar and then crashing mid-morning and then kind of bringing it back up with the unhealthy, unsustainable energy sources. And so we offer them various options throughout the day, both for, for the major meals, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and then the snacks between the meals so they can try and stabilize their blood sugar. Because when you bring all this together, uh, you know, again, if you're bookending your, your traditional recovery program with your exercise routine and then in, in between making modification to your diet so you're not spiking and dropping your blood sugar, uh, I think you're going to see major changes over time, mm -hmm. both in how you feel and how other people perceive you. So. Well, and that's why I love doing radio because I learn something new pretty much every show that I do for the last four years and bookending. So uh, learning that new term as far as how that can be applied. So thank you for sharing just some of those small tips about just what you eat and the blood work. I was even thinking while you were talking, you know, the attitude for gratitude and changing your mindset can be a, a, a win just to start with your own internal journey. And even, you know, for me being, you know, part Italian, the love for pasta. I've had to change even the way that my diet is, you know, with the, with the, 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 the wheat and the, um, the carbs and maybe changing over to like a broccoli crust and versus a regular pizza crust or changing over, over to butternut squash, uh, in, in place of actual pasta noodles, because it spikes the, the, um, the blood as far as, uh, you know, uh, the, the food that we're taking into our system. So Absolutely. that's, that's just even my own journey and sharing, sharing that with uh, folks. Um, now, as far as, um, you know, moving in through this, um, this active sober community that you're talking about and the, and the phrase that you use throughout the book, um, what do you, what does this mean to you and what benefits do you think this has as far as uh, the application of the spiritual side too? Because we've been talking about a lot about the physical body, right? Uh, you know, the blood work and our diet and what we do as far as exercise. But for you, Tom, how has the journey been on the spiritual? Because I always remind people that you're a physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual being all wrapped up into this cellular flesh suit that we call humans. How has it really impacted your spiritual um, lifestyle as well? Well, I think, you know, it's, it's important to say uh, that 
I don't think it's really possible to feel spiritually connected and in state uh, for me being feeling spiritually connected means I'm, I'm I'm in a feeling of gratitude right when I'm not taking care of my body and my physical and mental health when I don't feel good for whatever the reason when I'm kind of you know tired not, not getting enough sleep I feel very disconnected and I can be very kind of uh, you know not somebody you want to be around I can bark at people as opposed to being understanding and so I feel that and I don't feel I know that the physical and mental health is interrelated with the ability to feel a spiritual connection. And I also personally feel that, you know, technology today is our biggest uh, obstacle to feeling a spiritual connection. And what I mean by that is I used to sleep with my cell phone at the side of my bed. It would People would text me. This is an act of addiction. Text me all night. I would answer the text. I never really slept well. Oh, I was always available. It, you know, I it, it just I was I was really on a leash to my electronic devices. And then I started to shut them off. I just decided I, I knew that it wasn't a healthy environment, especially at night when I was trying to sleep. So I started shutting the, my phone off at 9 p.m. and sl- I slept. At first, I was really scared to do that, but then I slept really well. And I just started to realize that this constantly being available via mm-hmm. cell phone and text was impeding my ability to really kind of become introspective and mm-hmm. focus not only uh, to focus inward on my own needs and where I was at and how I was feeling and when I do my inventory of my own place and where how I feel. So a big part of in my spiritual program, when this, and I talk about this in the book, is getting off the grid, shutting off electronic devices at certain times of the day, to be able to reflect, uh, to journal, to enjoy sleep without being interrupted by other people's needs. And I don't turn my phone back on until after I get through my morning routine, which includes a warm bath, I go to the gym, you know, and I eat a really good breakfast, and then turn on the phone, and, you know, I have a lot of texts and emails and people who call. I'm I'm a practicing attorney. I go into everyone else's issues then, right? But the the more, more, the self, look, self-care is the complete opposite of active addiction, right? And so I try and be really focused on my self-care program. I try and stay in, like when I'm preparing my food, I really think about just how lucky I am <laughs> this food and how I, I appreciate the foods that I eat because it gives me sustenance and it keeps me so healthy. And I just really try and appreciate the little things that I used to take for granted in major ways. And so, you know, the spiritual part I think is a little bit difficult. Everyone, because everyone is subjective and they do mm-hmm. you know, they're on their own. But for me, I get out of nature. You know, I, I, I trek. Here's here. I'm someone who smoked for 24 years. Two years ago, I summited Mount Kilimanjaro in Africa. Last year, I, that's 21,400 feet. Last year, I, climbed, I trekked up to the Mount Everest base camp um, in oh, Nepal. Wow. Yeah, yes. yeah, 14,500 yeah. feet. And that's in December of no this year. Feet there. I, yeah, no, no, no. And I'm going climbing again in December of this year to Akinaga. I, I don't know if I pronounced it correctly. It's the highest mountain in the Western Hemisphere. It's 23,000 feet. And what I love about it, and, you know, I started this with little, like, day hikes uh, around Maine and upstate New York, but I, I don't, I, no one can reach me when I'm on these hikes, right? You're, I'm on a mountain. <laughs> <laughs> and it, I journal the entire time. I do inventories. I write about how I feel, what I what I think I can do better, what's what's working for me, who I appreciate in my life. Like I find getting off the grid and out into nature keeps me in balance. It really keeps me in balance, and I just I, I need it as part of my my self care program. Well, and I think it's important too for the listeners that you 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 know you talk about this in the book as well, self discipline, uh, because it does take discipline to do exactly that to shut the phone off. To I always you know remind my uh, clients and my students take the time to disconnect so that you can make time to reconnect, whether that's to rest, whether that's to reflect, whether that's to uh, rejuvenate or reminisce. Uh, you know those are all very important for the spiritual path. And I love the fact that you're going into nature and getting up to you know the the mountaintop. Or at least trying to get to those mountaintops and, and give it my uh, best see. shot. You know, and I, one yeah. other thing I want to say, Mark, because I think a lot of people are, will will relate to this if they're listening. You know, that I was a major people pleaser. 
my mm-hmm. entire life in an active addiction. I didn't know that, you know, not no, the word no was a full sentence and I could yeah. say no. <laughs> and I really did put other people's needs well beyond my own, you know. And so one of the profound changes in recovery for me has been putting my needs at the forefront and being able because I'm not healthy and if I can't take care of myself, I can't offer anybody else any guidance or, uh, you know, I, I really need to focus on myself. And so, you know, I have to address that people pleasing and it's, it's not something like I can just get over. It's yeah. a continuous process. I mean, I, I'm, the tendency I have is I just want to, you know, yes people to death so that I don't have to have like confrontation or anything, you know, or have them unhappy with me. And so every day it's a challenge to continue to avoid falling back Ooh, into that trap. You know? No, I'm here. Can you hear me? Oh, there you go. There, yeah, we, you went on yeah, mute there yeah. real quick. Yeah, I know. I, you know, I, I fight. I struggle every day, and I, that's why at the end of the day I follow the steps and I follow what we're taught, and I do it. You know, an inventory at the end of the day to see, you know, what I did right, what I did wrong, and to try and get advice from people when I, you know, don't think I can for whatever the reason, you know, uh, when I'm not sure what to do in a certain situation. Oh, we seem to be had a little bit of technical difficulties with the connection there, Tom. So we'll go ahead and just uh, stop there. Tom Shanahan, thank you so much for being on Inspired Living Radio. Check out his book, A Spiritual Adrenaline, and so much truth about what he said. Try to please the world, satisfy no one. We'll be back next Wisdom Wednesday at 12 p.m. Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern here on the Old Times Radio Network. Until our next soul adventure together, be kind, be caring, be compassionate. Namaste. Namaste.